And <clears throat> for those of you who don't know me, and we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about the PowerShell IEC and ways that you might want to use it to speed up things that you're doing in terms of writing scripts or even just using it on a daily basis. Um, I do lots of PowerShell stuff. I write a lot. I speak a lot. Some of you have seen me before. I can, people come up and go, oh, yeah, I know who you are. And I'll, okay, well, thank you. And, um, and all the slides and everything will be available down in a few days. You can download all my demos and stuff. So if you've got to hurry up and try to scribble things down, I've got some links, which will also be in the slide deck. So I'm going to talk about the IEC snippets, but hopefully more than just what you may be used to with snippets, tips and tricks, that sort of thing. How many of you use the IEC on a daily basis to do your work? Do you find it an easy thing to work with? Is it limitations? There should be limitations. That should be your answer. Um, the important thing to realize, the ISC was never intended to be a full-blown scripting environment, not an IDE. It's not a replacement for Visual Studio. It's not a replacement for commercial tools like Sapien's PowerShell Studio or even some of the other free tools like PowerShell Plus from Idera, all those other things that you may have, um, have seen. It was primarily designed to be a replacement so you did not have to use Notepad. Anyone using Notepad to write your scripts? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's hanging his head. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm not against using Notepad if your command is two lines and you know what you're doing. Fine. If it's a quick and easy, throw away something you're never, ever going to do again, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of writing PowerShell if it's fine. But Notepad gets you nothing. Brings nothing to the party. So the IEC was designed to give you something other than Notepad, and it's also something that's available on all your client machines. It's free, that's a biggie. You don't, if, you, if your company has the money to buy a full-blown tool, go for it. Um, also for a lot of people using PowerShell, I'm assuming most of you are, you consider yourself like IT professionals as opposed to developers. Right, so you're responsible for maintaining servers and user accounts and mailboxes and SharePoint and SQL and when there's a problem, people call you, right? <clears throat> okay. So tools like Visual Studio, we don't want, I certainly don't want my audience, my community of IT pros to have to be a developer to use PowerShell to write good scripts and to have to learn how to use Visual Studio to do that. So we can use the IC for that. I use the IC every day because I do a lot of writing and courseware development and all that, so I'm constantly writing PowerShell code. And for me, every little keystroke that I can save, any little, you know, five seconds of time that I can do through a little trick or shortcut, something in the IC, that all, for me anyway, that starts adding up throughout the day and throughout the week. So I get a little more done and then I, I'm also re reduces my frustration level. I have something I'll try to remember to show you I recently published because I work in a lot of different files at once. I can never remember what file, did, what file was I just working on? What, was, what did I call it? And it may be something that has been released from the or erased from the most recent run list because I've, I've had to work on something else. So I've sudden 20 files I've edited between that and the last time I was working on something. So I said, I need a better way to find what am I working on right now? You know, I've got scripts that are associated with the articles I'm writing. I want an easy way. So I came up with a way to do that. And those are the kind of things I want to share with you. Um, I really don't have many slides. In fact, that's pretty much uh, it. <clears throat> uh, the other slides at the end, there are some links. I so I'm going to show you some of these now in case, because I'm going to spend the rest of the time in demo. So if we don't get to it, you can at least see that they are here. We'll do questions and answers, website information, make sure you do the evals and stuff. All right, so the slides are done. So we're going to start with the IEC object model. Now, I'm going to assume already <clears throat> that all of you know what the PowerShell IEC is and know all the, the different menu 
options and how to configure it and show command and all of that. Yeah, if not, well, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make that assumption. You can learn uh, the other way, and you're gonna see that I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts. The number one tip that I'm gonna recommend, I've got little tips and tricks here towards the end, is learn the keyboard shortcuts. I like personally having <clears throat> the scripting pane full screen as opposed to having it on the bottom or the side. And so control R toggles me back and forth between the two things because I like being able to see everything. I can run the line and then if I need to jump back control R, right? So even just that little bit saves me because the more I can keep my hands on the keyboard instead of reaching for the mouse all the time to do stuff, Again, that's one of the little things that starts adding up over time. <clears throat> so the PowerShell ISC has its own object model. And that object starts with the $PS ISC built in by default. All right, so you can just type PS ISC and look at that. And you can see all the key properties. And that is not showing very well on the screen versus what I see on the computer. Because this should say current, that's what's getting cut off there. And let me see if I can, I won't go full screen, we'll just have to go with that. Make it a little bit bigger. Too much. Yep, too much. I'm not quite sure. Sneak it back just a little bit. All right, so we'll go with that. <clears throat> so we have this full object model built in by default, and you can do things with this object model. How many of you have ever played with this object model? Oh, okay. Well, then you can come up and <laughs> help me with some of this. Or actually, watch the stuff I'm doing, and then at the end, I'm going to ask you for your tips that you do with the ISC that I didn't cover. So I'll just I'll try to remember to call on you. And the rest of you, remember who raises their hand so you can <laughs> ask them. So one of the things, for example, that you can get is the current file that you're working on. Now, this is just an object, right? So if I want to know more about this object, same thing that you would normally do, right? You do PS ISC, of course, you get the nice IntelliSense here, current file, pipe it to get member, right? So we can do the same, <clears throat> just another object in PowerShell. It just happens to be built in. They've give us, given us something to expose. And because you're an IT pro, you should know how to work with objects and get member. I'm not going to do anything. Is that true? Yeah, nothing I'm going to show you is going to dive into working with the AST. I'm not going to compile any code. I'm not making... GUI based tools. I mean, Tobias's tool, how many of you have used IC steroids? It's a great tool, <clears throat> but it's not, so, and, and it's something that someone like Tobias or someone with a developer bent would create, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm glad he's done that t to help a lot of people, but I want to do things and share things with you that, oh, you know what? That tool doesn't do that, or I have something that is unique to my situation that I'd love to find a way, could, could I save a few keystrokes, something that would make this easier for me, assuming that you're using the IAC. So you're going to learn this object model. It's really not that difficult. There is a, another property <clears throat> called the editor. So you get PS, IAC, current file, editor. And the editor does things like tells you how many lines in your script, where your cursor is, the text of your script, what's actually been selected. And if we look at that for a get member, there's some cool methods here. Look at this one here, insert text. Actually, I guess I should do it on here for people seeing the video so they know what I'm talking about. There's an insert text method. There's a select method. There's a clear method. So hopefully you're starting to already think about, oh, I could use that and put text inside a file or get text out of a file. Knowing I have that, 
file, the current file has properties. It shows me the editor, whether it's been saved or not. Its path, where is that file located? So I programmatically, I can find what I'm working on very easily. And I have some things that I do that take advantage of that fact. In fact, there's also, again, a lot of this is for the discovery, there's a property current tab. Lots of properties that explain what's going on. For me, the important one is the files property, which gives me a collection of those file objects. It's just a collection like anything else, so you can enumerate it, look at the files you have open, look and see which ones have been saved, which ones have not been saved, if you want to change the encoding. They're just properties, and most of these uh, can be modified. And then the last important piece to you know, building your own tool set here with the IC is the add-ons menu. I think I hit the wrong, didn't do F8. So the add-on menu is this thing up here. And you can see I've already added on, I'm gonna talk about this module uh, in a little bit, you can create your own add-ons, and this is the easiest way to do it, because then you can assign keyboard shortcuts to your tips and tricks that you're going to come up with, or if you want to reuse the stuff that, that I'm doing. There are other add-ons. There's this link here. We'll take you to a Microsoft site, and there are some other tools that you can download and install, and then they'll show up. Uh, that's not counting things like the script analyzer and some of the new V5 stuff that you get. That's kind of completely separate. That typically shows up here when you have the view, when you have like the command add-on, like that. Those typically show in this column on the side. Or, said so you can create your own add-ons menu, and what you do is there's a, another property called submenus and that's typically where you're going to create your own, and I'll show you how we can do this. You can create your own menu and then put in your own menu items. And so you have your own tools that you are building. Any questions on any of that? Very clear? PSIC, and then you can just keep drilling down and just looking at the different properties and methods if you forget. Yes? Do you know if the site founder is available to... Uh... It, so the question is, is the side palette available? I believe it is. Let's double check here. Uh, PS ISE current visible horizontal tool. I think that is. You know, let's see if it's under options. I have seen that. There is a way to turn that on and off through PowerShell. Da, 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 da. I'll have to try to find that. I'm, I, I've seen that in here somewhere. I just don't remember off the uh, show toolbar, show outlining, show line numbers. No, I don't remember off the top of my head where it is in that object model, but it, I believe it is there. So let me show you here. I've got a little demo to add something to the to that menu. <laughs> So I still use Notepad. So I'm going to create a shortcut to my menu that will allow me to start Notepad. And the way that we're going to do this is <clears throat> we're going to get that submenus object because you have you can't really well, you can but you you go to that submenus object has an add method. That method takes three parameters. The first is the text that you want to be displayed. The second is a script block, which can be as long as you need it to be, or you can call a script or whatever you, you want, call it a function defined in, your, in the IC, but it's a script block. That's why it's in curly braces. And the only thing I'm running in that script block is notepad.exe. And then optionally, you can add a keyboard shortcut using control plus whatever keys or alt plus or control plus alt plus whatever you want. If you don't want a keyboard shortcut, just use dollar null. But you have to, the method 
needs to have three parameters or arguments, otherwise you'll get an, an error. <coughs> and this is, if this is something I wanted all the time, this is a command that you'd put in your PowerShell IAC profile script. I'm going to talk about profiles uh, in a little bit, in a little more detail. So I can just select that line, run it. Now, this will write an object to the pipeline. So if you were putting this like in your profile, you'd probably pipe that to out no, so you don't really want to see that. Uh, but I kept it in so you could see this actually writes another object to the pipeline. But now, if we come up here and look at my add-ons menu, there is open notepad. And I can do control alt n and it works. So you can put in whatever code that you want. And because I showed you that IC object model and there are things that you can do programmatically to manipulate the files that you have open or the files that you want to work with, you can start getting really creative and start building tools or you may want to manage other things in your environment, but right from the IEC. I want to open up um, the event viewer, or I want to create a new remote session to five different servers, and I've got a little script that will do that. You can put that in the PowerShell IEC, give yourself a keyboard shortcut. Remember, I like keeping my hands on the keyboard. I don't want to have to move to a mouse and navigate up to the add-ons menu and click and poke, or poke and click, or whatever. If you try to run this again, this is especially true if you're building something and you're kind of debugging it, trying to get your commands to work. If I were to run this again, I'm going to get an error. I'm going to get an error. It's kind of hard to read that there, but the error basically is the keyboard shortcut is in use. So it will check. And I've not found a good way to go through and identify all of the keyboard shortcuts that are currently in use. That's on my wish list of finding a way to do that. <clears throat> now, if I were to change this, though, and now rerun it, it will happily run it, and now I have two choices. The, the real way to do this if you're debugging is you <coughs> exit PowerShell, IC, start again. Now this session, that shortcut I made, if I do new PowerShell tab, as my PowerShell profile script's got to run, they don't show up in the new PowerShell tab. So it's like anything else, those things are scope specific. This, I see, scripting gate module showed up because that's in my profile. But my little notepad thing doesn't carry over. Just so you know that. So here's another way that's a little more complicated. I'm well, not, not too complicated. I'm doing more than just running Notepad. I'm going to define a script block that's going to say if the current file that is open, basically the current file that has focus here, that you are looking at, that's the current file. I'm looking at the is saved property, which I know from looking at that object in, with get member as a Boolean. So if it is saved, I don't have to do equals true because if it's there, that is true by default. If it's true, then I'm going to open up the file in Notepad. Otherwise, I'm going to display a warning that the file has not been saved. And I can use Notepad and use that current file full path to know where that file is. Maybe not something too practical, but I just wanted to demonstrate the concept here. So I'm going to find my action. And then add, in this case, control alt O, and I'm piping it to out null because I don't want to see the output. If there's an error, you're still going to see the error. And now I should have open current file in Notepad with the shortcut of control alt O. So this file I'm currently working on has not been saved, right? Because the little asterisk, you know, you've seen me typing in it. So if I try to run this, I should get my warning, which I do. But if I were to go back here to something that has been saved, Control-Alt-O, so I'm able to 
take advantage of accessing files that I'm working with the United States, doing something with them. And for me, that's the big time saver. You can add a sub menu as well. So if you don't want it to go, <clears throat> and that's what I would recommend, instead of tacking everything in under add-ons, create a sub menu, which is what moved over again, which is what I did with my IC scripting gig. So I created, and you see a whole hierarchy of sub menus. You can do that by still using the sub menus add and the name that you want, but there's no script block and there's no keyboard shortcut. So just dollar null and dollar null. And when you run that line, then, then there's my tools. Now the good thing, the best thing to do is save that to a variable as I did there, dollar menu. That way I can now insert new tools and reference that object. Because this object now is a submenus object, which has that add method. Otherwise I have to go to the <coughs> hassle of trying to enumerate my submenus, that's too much work. So save it to a variable. So I'm going to define here a little private function that I'm only going to use in the IC. So that's why I'm not worrying about naming conventions. It's called insert me and all it's going to do is basically define a here string called dollar info. It's going to, and it's going to insert it in a region and it's going to insert some information like who I am, my computer name, the operating system, the date, power subversion table, and a company name. And I'm going to take that here string and insert it into the current file. Wherever, whatever file I happen to be in, wherever the cursor is in that file, that's what I'm going to insert. I'm going to take that command and add it to my little My Tools menu. See, I'm using My Menu, Insert Info, calling my function, Insert Me, and giving it a keyboard shortcut of Control-Alt-I. So let's get that to work. And I already have something using Control-Alt-I. Let's do Control-Alt. I don't know if that'll work. Okay, Control-Alt-K seemed to work. So now I can have my script open that I'm working on. And I want, in terms of my say my practice is to have some, some meta information about who wrote the script or, and where it was created. So now, instead of me having to remember to type all that information, that's a lot of stuff to type and what's my operating system and all that, I can now do control alt K and there it is. And it's inserted into a region so I can collapse it. And I even have this as a <clears throat> because that's just a, a comment block. So I didn't have to type any of that programmatic just like that. So if you were to type all that, well, you probably would have quit after, the, quit after the first line. But now I have a really quick and easy way to insert some information. So if you have boilerplate, you know, I'm building a file and I've got a template and there's always some disclaimer or some piece of information that I always want, or you want to somehow build a template or pieces of a template, that's what you do. I have a number of shortcuts like that that actually are turned into snippets. We'll talk about snippets in a moment. So I can do, for example, I have a standard disclaimer that I can just do it. I could, or some of these things you could do like I did and add to the menu. And this could also, no, this could not be a snippet because this has code that's actually evaluated at runtime. Snippets all static text. That's why I didn't do this as a snippet because I won't be able to get the date and the PowerShell version. This is static. So that I made into a snippet, which I think is the next thing that I'm going to talk about. Any questions on using the object model to create your own little shortcuts of things that you can do with the files? I've got other examples. Yes? What version of PowerShell was this introduced? The ISC, so the question is, how far back does the object model go? At least to version 3. I, yeah, let's just stick with that. 
Um, I don't think it's version two, um, but hopefully none of you are running version two on your desktops that you're using to manage your environment. If you are, I feel very sorry for you. Um, and I'm, by the way, I am running on Windows 8.1 with PowerShell version four. Uh, everything I'm showing you as far as I know should also work in V5. And I'm not using anything with the AST, which can really make my head hurt. I have to drink more before I can get into that. Um, but, you know, it's just an object. So I can understand objects and methods. And to me, this is pretty simple. Granted, I know some of you may be still kind of new and getting used to PowerShell, so some of this may look a little arcane. Just let it sink in, let it wash over you, like going to the beach and letting the water hit you. Eventually, enough of it will go up your nose that you'll get it, okay? Or in your mouth or whatever body part happens to be most open to <laughs> the water. All right, so any other questions on this before I move on? Okay, watch the time here. So snippets, now you all know Microsoft ships out of the box lots of snippets. And you can access those snippets all with, let me do a new file here, Control-J. And then you can find down, find what you want. For example, I want to insert a do loop. So it saves you a lot of time by getting the habit of doing Control-J and seeing if there's a snippet. Now, the great thing is that you can build your own snippets. It's a little difficult, but I have some stuff that will make it easier for you that I'm going to share. So there are a set of commands <clears throat> uh, in the IC module, get IC snippet, import, and new IC snippet. So get IC snippet, if you were to run this from PowerShell prompt, all of the snippet files are just XML files. And I've got a lot here because I have added a lot. And they're in your PowerShell folder under a snippets directory. Okay? Th these exist by default. But it's just XML. Now, there is a command lit new IC snippet that you can run to create a new snippet. You give it a title. That's the title that's going to show up when you do Control-J. Some longer description if you want. The text, that's basically what's going to be inserted in the snippet. And then, optionally, you can insert an author string. There are ways you can also specify where you want it indented. I think that's the caret offset. But it's kind of tedious, I think to have to try to type all those things, especially if you want a more complex piece of code to go into the text, right? If I just want to create a snippet that just puts in copyright 2016, yeah, that's probably pretty easy to do from here. But for me, that's still a lot of typing. But for the demo, I can show you this. So I can create a snippet right from, actually, I'm not going to do this. I've already run this because I've already created the snippet. But if I wanted to, I could insert something that has my name, so the description, so the text would be my name, MVP, and my Twitter handle. So I could run that, it would then create the file. And using psedit, that's the actual file that it creates. And you can see pretty self explanatory story, title, description, and then the, the text. Not too bad, except, you know, it's still a lot to type. Forgot where I'm at here. And just to prove that it works, let's come here, let's delete all that. So there's another keyboard shortcut that you all need to know. Control A, right? Some of these keyboard shortcuts, same you've used in other programs, but if you don't get in the habit of using them, Otherwise, I've got to select the mouse and go through and find everything. Boom, control A and it's all gone. Um, control J, M, Y, my name. I just won't touch anything. You see it pops up and gives me, the, there's the description and I hit enter and there it is. Obviously, normally I put that in a comment block that I would be working. So here, what I would normally do, just to give you an idea, is I would build a multi-line comment with the pound symbol and not the love symbol. So can't do it. And I would do control J, 
my name. Of course, I can't do this while I'm talking and typing at the same time. Control J, I have a little, um, I'm also wearing my bifocal, so I can't, uh, instead of my close-up glasses. Learn more, I have my little that, Control J, disclaimer. So I have all these little pieces, Control J, find a snippet, slam it in, slam it in, slam it in. Now I could, and you could, if this is something that you use all the time, then just build a snippet that puts it all in. But I've broken things down into little more discrete blocks, depending on what it is I'm doing. Sometimes I don't need the disclaimer, because I already have it from something, and I just want to update and print my little learn more link. Okay, so that's why, for me, that's why things are, are split up that way. And we have 15 minutes. So, instead, what I did, instead of having tried to use that new uh, IC snippet, I wrote a function. It's called convert code to snippet, and it's part of this scripting geek module, which I will show you and tell you how to get, get it. And all that function does, I can sh show you the code. Uh, I'm using, I am using some Visual Basic stuff to give me a graphical pop-up box, because I find that if you're in the IC, you're kind of thinking graphically anyway, so. <clears throat> but I'm for the most part using the ISC commandlets <clears throat> to do all that. Well, we don't need to read the code. Let's just run it. So I'm going to, my code modifies to be. Snipify with the. Okay, so I'm going to create. I want to create a snippet because maybe I'm doing some stuff that I want to re put the line in to require the SQL PowerShell module. It's not necessarily that much to type, but I'm lazy. So my shortcut that I use is Control Alt S. So now I'm running my little convert to code snippet. So I enter a title and let's say require SQL PS, prompt me for a description, this is required, uh, an author, it defaults to your name, which, and now I can come, let's go to a new file here, control N, new file, control J, uh, what did I just, oh, requires, Uh, one of these is left over from the previous demo. The snippets, once you create them, are persistent, right? Because they're written to disk. If you want to get rid of a snippet, you have to delete the XML file and then restart the IC if you really want it to, to be gone. When you load the IC, it basically kind of loads all those snippets ahead of time. So now, just like that, easily created a snippet. This is important because the whole point of writing PowerShell scripts is you only write it once. So if you have a block of code, say, oh yeah, I'm going to use this a lot, or in free, you know, repeated scripts, and that's why I wrote this, because I do that, is I select my block of code, my shortcut to create the snippet, put in the title and description, done. Now I always have that block of code that I can insert as a little building block as I'm building my scripts, and it has saved me probably two minutes. If I do, if that saves me two minutes building five scripts, I'll, boom, I've saved 10 minutes. I've kept time now to go get a cup of coffee. Or I can get done 10 minutes earlier or whatever you want to do with those 10 minutes. So those, for me, that's where the benefit comes. Just those little bitty incremental time savings or even just the frustration savings make me calm, not require so much bourbon. It's... <laughs> good that way. So snippets are really good. Uh, so then you can delete the snippet and it'll stay there. Any questions on snippets? Well, I have like five minutes to do my tips and tricks and then you're, some of you are going to tell me what you do with the IC. Alright. This is just kind of a general list <clears throat> of things that I have found useful and some things that people don't oh I didn't know you could do that. When you are writing a script in PowerShell, my first tip is insert spaces around the equal sign. 
In the power, and what I mean by that is, if you were in the PowerShell IC, I want dollar $A to equal get service. Notice I'm not getting any IntelliSense help. And that's because PowerShell sees this all as one string. And so the, the parser says, I don't know what you're typing. Whereas, if you get in the habit, now I can hit tab, and now I can get the tab completion because there's that, that delineation. So it also makes your, your code, I think, easier to read. It's a small thing for a lot of IT pros who are new to scripting. You may think, I'm just going to slam it all together. You can. It'll still run. It just makes your writing a little more time consuming and more error prone. Get in the habit of using tab completion. But you have to also pay attention. Tab, there we go. Because then you're going to get rid of typos. Because I could easily have tried to type get service. And if I'm trying to talk at the same time, I'm probably going to mistype it. But PowerShell is not going to detect that that is an error. See, there's no red squiggly. Because maybe get survey is a valid command, but PowerShell doesn't know about it. Whereas if I use tab, so I'm not going to know that that's an error if I try to run my script. So if I do this with tab completion, and by the way, when you're in something like this, that's partially finished, my cursor's somewhere in there, you can just hit tab and it will complete it for you. You don't have to move your cursor anywhere. <clears throat> PowerShell profile. Actually, the other real trick here to this tip is PS edit. The command PS edit, you can run from the PowerShell ISE and you can load any file you want. Hopefully there's nothing too embarrassing in a.txt. Um, any file you want just with PS edit. You don't have to go and navigate. You, you saw I used tab and completions. So I have to type the full name to the path. Saves me a little time. You can do the same thing with your, with your profile script. Now, so here's my profile script for the ISC. What I really need to point out here, hopefully those of you are aware of this, you have multiple profile scripts in PowerShell, right? You're all aware of that? You have scripts that are unique to the PowerShell host that you are in. Now, in this case, the host, that's where you see like current user, all host, current user, current host. That's under the documents, Microsoft.PowerShell. In this case, it has ISE underscore profile.ps1. If you look at this in the console, and that is the default value that you see when you just do dollar profile. See, this one is PowerShell, so it's unique to the host. <clears throat> so, and there's also then, so there's current user, current host, and then current user, all hosts. So what I do, because I'm in both the console and the IC all day, I have some things like variables and shortcuts and functions and stuff that I want to have regardless of them in the ISE or the PowerShell um, console. All of those things go in current user, all hosts. Then in my PowerShell ISE profile, this one here, I put in all my commands to load my module, to create my shortcuts. So I've got things that are only work or make sense in the PowerShell ISE. Uh, you can see I'm using the IC object model to manipulate. I'm, that's why I'm setting my script pane to maximize. I can set how close you want to zoom in. So you can configure the IC just like you do the PowerShell profile. Actually, you can go a little further because you can configure what it looks like, not just what it can do. Uh, I've got some other things in here that I then call and build and load my module. running out of screen space here. Um, so, that's, so it's very useful to, to do that. Uh, if you are in the PowerShell console, just type IEC, open up the console. Open up the PowerShell IEC. What I typically do is I run the console in elevated privileges. 
And if I want to start the IC, I just type IC, IC opens, elevate it. For me, that saves me, again, I'm not, I don't have to go to my menu and find run <coughs> administrator IC, it's too much work. Um, F1 help. This, a lot of people like this because they don't know about this. Let me find a, Come on. Oh, not caps lock. Tab. There we go. If you put your cursor anywhere in a commandlet name and press the F1 key, you get pop-up help. So you don't have to go and look and try to find it. Put your cursor, and you don't have to highlight the word. As long as the cursor's anywhere in there, F1, you're good to go. By default, PowerShell IC will use local help, but you can configure it to use online help. You modify the PC options, use local help and set it to false. Then when you do that F1 for help, you'll, it's like doing help dash online. And it'll open up help in your browser. Will that also work for modules that you've created that are in the profile, the module search path? Yeah, that? it will. Okay, automatically, it, yeah. I'm pretty sure, because it's, the IC has no way of knowing that this is has that this is a local module or this is from Microsoft or whatever. So it doesn't need to be dot sourced already or the module loaded. Yeah, if the module's loaded and you have but it has to have online help if you set this to online. Uh -huh, oh but but yeah, if you have a module loaded that has help, mm -hmm. yeah, it will and you do F one, it'll load up the help. But you know how um, in PowerShell you might not have a module loaded, but it starts typing commands and when Oh PowerShell yeah, because uh, uh, PowerShell cool. 3, you know, they introduced the auto-loading. Yeah. I think it will. I have, you'd have to test that. Um, use regions, you know, put in, you know, pound region something and then end region, the nice thing is those then collapse. So take advantage of regions. Now, it's speaking- case hmm? It's case sensitive. It's case sensitive. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I think, yeah, the region, yeah, they need to be lower case. Yeah, I ran into that. Um, that common region or code region is what like. I'm sorry, what was that? So is it what with code in the middle, or is it common based set? No, now in here, you can run whatever whatever you want. And that's the nice thing is you can then collapse that region. Um, control M will toggle between opening and closing all collapsible sections in, in the IC. If you have a function, because functions will automatically do that. Um, we run out of time here. If you have a function, collapse the function. And if you want to like load that function in your PowerShell IC, you don't have to go and try to select it all with the mouse. Collapse it, just select that line that says function in your definition, hit F8, and that <coughs> loads it all in your session. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, and you can open multiple files like PSEdit, Start at PS1. If you want to open all the PS1 files or whatever type of whatever text file that you can open. Now, real quickly here, this Scripting Geeks module that I wrote does a, has a lot of commands, all using the IC object model. These are all written as script files, so you can go in and look at the code and all that. Uh, these out on GitHub. I have a JDH IT Solutions repository, and you'll see you can go and download this module. Uh, and install. So I have things that I've been, and this is, I'm still working on this, but I have things, for example, I've taken advantage of the IC model to try to insert bookmarks. So I'm working on this script, it's kind of long, and I want to easily jump back to a particular location in a file. So I've got, that's what the bookmarks are doing. I've got some commands to convert different pieces of, for example, convert code to snippet, uh, things that will open and close files, save files, save files as ASCII. Um, this is the, my current work. So I have basically, if I'm working on a file and I want to 
say, oh yeah, I'm working on this right now, it's a current project, I can do control alt A, it adds it to a text file. If I do control alt I open current work files, it then re PowerShell will read that text file and load all the files I'm currently working on. So if I'm working on 10 files for 10 different scripts or whatever, I can do control alt I and have 10 scripts open just like that. And they could be anywhere on my computer as long as they've been added. And control alt E, right here just to show you. So control alt E opens up my file. If I decide I'm done with one of them, I just manually delete and save the file. <coughs> if I wanted to, I could do control alt A and it would load all of those and I can get back to work right away. So you can kind of play with that because it's on GitHub, so if you want to fork it or do something else with it, feel, feel free. And it's completely open for you, uh, all taking advantage of the PowerShell IC. So who uses the IC? What other tips and tricks do you guys do that I didn't show you? Yeah. yeah I use it um, to call actually a module where I have my, what I call start script. And basically, it will um, have a country file in XML for every script I write. And it will call like a of, uh, I can have um, the variables node, and I will just put key value pairs. And I will put like new variables with new values. And it automatically, when my script starts, then it will be called. And so basically, I go to snippet for that. Is that shared or published anywhere? With my colleagues. <laughs> so. Uh, but I can show you if you want to. No, don't show me. You need to show everyone else who's here. So you need to publish it and post it and so people know. I mean, that's how we, that's why, and that's why we do the summit, so that we can share things. I just have the opportunity to come and show you and share what, what I'm doing, but I want all of you, you know, to be able to do that as well. Did any, was there anything I showed you that looked like worth your time and not going into Krishna's session? Sure. I gave you an opportunity to go. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? One thing that I do is uh, I change the color coding. So I have black, black, black screen and then change the... Yes, you can. For those of you who don't know, uh, you can come under <coughs> view, I'm sorry, tools, options. And you can change all of the, the scheme. You can actually, and I think my scripting module has a few themes that I borrowed from people. <laughs> So I can come here, for example, if I want, um, oh, like this Vim theme. So now that changes all of my color schemes to something that's more. Try pressing Control N. Yeah. Yeah, so, good. well, and that's why themes are, you can change all the color schemes, but there's a lot of things to change. So it, it's not. And you have to be careful with some things depending upon if you are using like right host or right verbose, right warning and all, they have a different colorization for the stream. So it does take a little trial and error. But, and if you do that and publish a theme, like this Vim theme was actually published online a couple years ago, so I just downloaded it. Um, <clears throat> you can then come here and then share it with people, publish it somewhere. Because then under tools, options, you can come here and do manage themes and then do import. Or if you're creating one, there's an export, it creates a special XML type file. You can then share it with someone, they can import and they can have the theme that you have. And my time is up and I'll be around you know, for the next couple days. So if you have questions, let me know. Um, I think we're gonna have lunch here soon. Thank you all very much. Mm -hmm.